I want to read a number of scriptures to you. You know, start with first epistle of St. John, chapter 5, from verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I, I want you to listen to these scriptures very attentively, carefully, because of what they say. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Our faith. Even our faith. Our faith overcomes the world. The world is cosmos. That means the world with its systems, its arrangements, its order and governments. All that is in the world. Our faith overcomes the order of this world, the systems of this world, the governments of this world, the powers of this world. Look at it again. This is the word of God. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Why does he tell you this? Go to verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. You're going to see this. What, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Hallelujah. Anybody who truly believes in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. You believe that Jesus is the Christ. Says you're born of God. And in that verse 4, he tells you, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And why does he use the term whatsoever here? Because he means not only presence, but products, anything that comes out of God, including his words. Whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith overcomes the world. Overcomes the cosmos. Look at number five, verse five. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Say, I have overcome the world. I'm a world overcomer. Now that's so powerful. That's so powerful. We will never be overcome. Because we're born of God. Think about it. Do you know how they tried to eliminate Christianity all those many years? It's almost 2,000 years and we're still here. Go to verse 12. Oh, let's take it from 10. 10, 10 will be fine. From verse 10. Tells you that the one who believes on the Son of God that has the witness in himself. Amen. And he that believeth not God. 
had made him a liar. Because he believed not the record that God had given of his son. Say, I believe. And this is the record. That God had given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. Look at the next verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God. That you may know that he have eternal life. I have written this to you. That you may know. I want you to know that you have eternal life. I have written for a purpose. I want you to know that you have eternal life. I want you to know. In that 14th verse tells us something. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. That's amazing. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now look at the next verse. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. This is important because what I'm going to read to you. You remember in 1st Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 he says to us I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. He tells us pray for everybody. Pray for all men. And then it goes for kings and for all that are in authority. That means you're praying for leaders of nations. You're praying for um, presidents and prime ministers, monarchs. You're praying, says all that are in authority. And he's talking about civil authority here. You're praying for judges. You're praying for, uh, you know, heads of institutions and so on. It says that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So he gives us the power, the authority to pray in his name and receive answers. Receive answers. This is important for reason. He knows what the world is like. He knows. So, in Romans chapter 8, from verse 37. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Who per command. It means more than conquerors. It means beyond. We've gone beyond. Who per, beyond. We've crossed. Beyond victorious. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Look at the next verse. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, <laughs> nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus 
our Lord. Ho, 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 hallelujah. That's amazing. Look at Psalm 82. Look at verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Oh, 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 oh. glory to God. It says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Why does he say that to you? Why does he say that to you? If you read from the first verse all the way to the sixth verse, he says a number of things about God being in the congregation of the mighty. He's not talking about others. He's talking about his own people. And then he tells them that the world is going in the wrong direction. All the foundations of the earth, he says, out of course. So he needs those who are supposed to provide the answers. And then they don't do it. So he tells them in the seventh verse, he says, you shall die like men. You shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Why? Because of the foundations were out of course and they do nothing about it. So he says, but I have said ye are gods. I have said ye are gods and all of your children are the most high. And Jesus corroborated this in the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel when you read the 34th verse. So, he's telling us we have to stand up and answer our name. If you look at the 74th Psalm, in, in fact, it'll do you good to read the whole chapter of the 74th Psalm. It shows you what God really thinks about what's happening in the world. All right? And this prophet Asaph talking to God in his prayers, he cries out to God. Okay? Then he comes to the 20th verse. In the 20th verse, look at it, Psalm 74 from verse Praise to God. He says, oh God, have respect unto the covenant. See, this is, this is the mentality. This is the way you're going to think as you pray. Oh Lord, have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Have you seen that cruelty? Have you seen it in your country? Have you seen it in your city? Have you seen it? There's cruelty in the dark places. Of the earth where the light of the gospel is not shining or where it's where it shines dim where the light is dim and the voice of God is heard small dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty so he prays to God he says have respect unto the covenant look at the next verse Oh, let not the oppressed return ashamed. You're going to pray like that, Lord. Don't let the oppressed return ashamed. There are people that are being oppressed in our world. And sometimes, you're not talking about, hey, we just talked about the, the French government taking custody of the, 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 the founder of the telegram. That's oppression. What exactly did he do wrong? They can't even tell us what he did. The guy's not poor. So you're not talking about someone being poor here. There are people who are oppressed even though they are rich and powerful. Weaponization of the justice system against anyone is oppression. When you pray, you pray to God, Lord, don't let the oppressed return ashamed. Because they hope in God. Some of them don't even know God. And yet they're oppressed. 
And we are the ones who can pray for them. Because here he says, let not the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise thy name. Even the poor and the needy should not return ashamed. Because they're poor and needy. So you've got these classes here. The oppressed and then the poor and needy. There are nations that are being oppressed today. Whole nations that are being oppressed, dictated for by those who are more powerful and their governments. I told you better do this or else. So oh, you can't be quiet. You got to pray. You got to pray. Pray. You got to pray like this. Lord, remember, have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Lord, let not the oppressed return ashamed. Those who hope on God, may they not return ashamed. There are people incarcerated today for offenses they never committed. Do you know that? There are people in prisons around the world today. I told you how it was, um, I think, uh, uh, two, two years ago, some 2022 or 20, was it 2021, where over 2,000 prisoners were set free because they reviewed their cases and they found they were not guilty of the crimes for which they had been incarcerated. And that was in one country. Just one country. 2,000 prisoners. Set free not because the, the prisons were full. But because through the legal system. They were found to have not been guilty. Of the crimes. For which they were incarcerated. Think about how many others. Are suffering. For a crime they never committed. So we have to pray for those in prison. We have to pray for those who are being oppressed. Pray for them. Pray for them. Don't neglect them. So God will remember you. Pray for them. Pray for them. And we're going to pray for them in a few minutes. We're going to pray for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is so important. And this month of September is the month of conquerors. God is saying, where are my conquerors? Where are my victors? I have said here, God's and all of your children of the Most High, God is saying, where are you? He's saying, stand up. Make your voice heard. Let your voice be heard in heaven and heard on earth. You're going to speak for God. This month of September, speak for God. Speak. For freedom. Speak for liberty. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. He has given you the victory. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. And the Antichrist spirits that are roaming around the world today can never subdue us. He says, ye are of God, little children, and I've overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors. So this month, we're standing up and declaring the victory of Christ. 
over all the satanic forces. We are subduing them. This month we must tame them in the spirit. I told you during the communion service in, uh, was it in, in, in August? Communion service? Or was it during the Your Lover specials when they came up with, uh, they came up with the M pox? I told you it was dead on arrival. And that their words will not mean anything. Because God said it. He said, they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And they're being lightly esteemed around the world. Their words mean nothing. Their words mean nothing. The lying tongue, the Bible says, is for a season, a short time. And all the way until the rapture of the church, the deception to use vaccines to pollute the world and kill people, that's not going to work again. It's over. That one is over. They need some other tricks. But all the tricks are in the same bag. The power of the Holy Ghost is at work in the church and in the churches of Christ around the world today. And I'm telling you, this church of Jesus Christ around the world, God's church today is the church of victory. It will not succumb. It will not go under. Remember it. It is from glory to glory, faith to faith, Grace to grace.